Hey everybody and welcome to another RCT2 hacking tutorial. If you happen to catch this video for the like half an hour that it was up earlier, I made a mistake and uh, part of the audio didn't record, so I'm re-recording it again. Um, thankfully it was a short video, um, so we can uh, get the whole experience. Uh, so if you saw that one before, apologize, uh, check out this new one here. So our little hacking park here has grown over the years from our very first uh, little 2x2 two two flat right here all the way up to our latest tutorial which was the Maurizona uh, XCAR XT150 model. Uh, today we're going to get back into it after a little hiatus and we are going to look at the Zero Jet Skis. So this right here is what we're uh, modeling after today. Uh, let's take a look at a photo of the real one. So this is what the real Zero Jet Skis look like. It's a round ride that's loaded from a center platform and the uh, carriages all circle around the platform. You actually stand up in the ride. You can fit two people, generally an adult and a kid. And uh, the little steering wheel that you see there, you can turn to release a chain on the back of your vehicle to make it swing out as the vehicles spin around the platform. Uh, depending on whether you swing it out or pull it inwards, uh, you can create sort of a uh, kind of whipping effect, kind of pulling it in and out uh, like you might see on an old classic whip ride. Uh, they're a lot of fun, um, and uh, they're just kind of a neat, interesting ride. A little bit low capacity, which is why you often see them in twos. Uh, this particular model here is at Legoland in Florida, um, and they uh, you can see a second one there in the background. Uh, so they're pretty common in Europe, um, less common in the U.S., but I do see them around on occasion. Um, so I thought we would go ahead and recreate this. Now, the key thing to note here is that we're going to be using custom vehicles. Uh, so these vehicles here are from Rumi. Uh, they're called Zero Jet Ski Flat Ride Cars. I'll post a link to that in uh, the description below uh, so you can download them yourself. Uh, and I'll uh, link to all Rumi's other rides, which are plentiful and very cool. Um, so it actually makes it very easy, the fact that he's done his own uh, vehicles here because they're already pre-spaced. And once they get to a certain speed, they kind of swing outwards, as you can see right here. So that's sort of what we're taking advantage of. If you want to do no custom scenery, then my suggestion would be to use the bobsled cars because they swing out a little bit. Now, granted, they swing upwards, which is not quite ideal, but uh, depending on the situation, you may be able to make that work for you as well. So that's an alternative if you're not uh, feeling the whole custom scenery thing. So this is actually all it is. It's a very simple hack overall. So let's um, let's take a look. What we're going to do is basically take a, a um, above ground station. We're going to split off the first car, send it down below to our control track, and then send the other cars, two through seven, to our circular track here. That's going to be our visible track. All right, so first things first, let's go to cheats and let's just turn on everything. Uh, everything that is except for the allow building track at invalid heights, just so we don't accidentally screw things up. You don't need all of them, but um, it's good to have it. Anyway, get our mini coaster track. You can really use any track you want. I tend to use mini coaster for these for whatever reason. Um, we need at least two pieces of station. Uh, it really doesn't matter how many you have, but uh, we'll just stick with the two. And then we need enough berth behind the station to fit a seven car train. Now keep in mind, like I said, this is a seven car train that's already pre-spaced. So you need about this much space. We'll We'll double check and see. Now you can see our entrance and exit is here. It's also one higher than the visible track, which if we go back over here and take a look and zoom in, we can see that the peeps here are hanging up one tile from the water. Um, just visually looks a little bit better. And then I'm using an invisible queue here with the mini uh, golf uh, pathway as our entrance and our exit, just because I think it looks pretty clean uh, compared to a lot of other custom scenery options. So what we're gonna do is come out of here and first of all we need to get underneath we're going to build our circle track first so let's just do this and then we'll get rid of this guy for a minute and we're going to back this up uh, let's turn on zero clearances so disable clearance checks and then we're going to once we get right underneath that first station track we're going to go upwards and then flat backing up so now we've merged in to uh, the piece right behind the station and that is all we need to do so let's take a look at this we're going to pull this back and we are going to put a circular track in here, one space, and then we're going to drop our circle here. This is going to be the circle that the actual vehicles are going to traverse on. 
Uh, what you want to do, so you can kind of see, this is your four by four circle. And we want to make sure that the station platform is on one of those center, centered on one of the edges. So it, oh, it certainly is. If we highlight the right ones, you can see that that station is in the right spot. We can go ahead and throw our huts on there now or later, however we want to do it. Okay, so next we're going to make our underground track. It can go wherever it wants to. Um, just for convenience sake, I'm going to do two corners here and then flatten it off. And you can see that that's at 20 uh, or at zero uh, feet here. It can go down further if we wanted to. It doesn't need to. Uh, what we need next is a control track. This is a separate ride from the one that you have up above, uh, but it can be the same, different, whatever you want it to be. We're going to use another mini coaster, turn on our height marking so we can see that we're putting it at zero. I'm going to match that station location right here, uh, just underneath. And we're going to do a couple things. First of all, we're going to go off the back and we're going to build some brakes. We want this to slow down sort of at a reasonable pace. Um, so it kind of looks like a real ride as it's slowing down from, um, uh, from whichever kind of operational speed that it's on. Uh, we're going to put one four and two nines in there. Actually, let's do two fours and two nines. We'll extend that out. All right. And then let's go ahead and grab our... Uh, control track again, or, or not our control track, this is our base track, and let's uh, loop this around. And we need to merge this in, so we're going to merge it with a brake piece. It doesn't need to match the same brake speed, it just needs to be a brake piece, so it's now merged together. Uh, don't be fooled here or confused that you have two gray tracks. These are two different coasters. We'll turn this one red for convenience. Okay, so now we are doing our control track. The uh, key thing here is to try and get a realistic operation. So typically what I do is leave one blank, then put a chain lift, then leave another blank, and then put a chain lift, and now we're going to go on from there. Um, it, it just kind of slows the startup process. It'll be a little bit jerky, but not super, super noticeable at the low speeds that we're going to be traveling. So from now on, we're going to keep this chain lift engaged, even around our corners. Uh, if you are pressed for space, your best bet's going to be your wild mouse track because you can do the tight corners. Uh, if you're not pressed for space, this is just convenient, um, in my opinion. And however long you make this track below is how long the ride is going to be. Um, this track, like we said, can do anything. It can go up, it can go down, it can go L-shaped, it can do whatever whatever space you need to fill underneath you can put this with. Really, as long as that chain lift is in there, you're fine. And if you really want to get clever with uh, speeds and things, you can use the booster track and you can adjust the speed of the launch down there. But really, this ride doesn't see speed adjustment. Um, so we're going to leave it like this. Now we are going to, before the last two pieces here, turn off our chain lift. So it kind of coasts into the brakes. Again, just an operational thing. This is maybe a shorter layout based on this track length, but that's probably okay. So we're going to leave it right there. So next we're going to take our uh, main track up top and we're going to change our, our, our ride vehicles, zero jet ski flat ride cars. Uh, we want a single train or a single uh, train despite the fact that this is called a car. And we want a seven car train because this takes six and then down below it takes um, uh, one. Uh, oh, and what we didn't do is change our operating mode. This goes to boat hire mode. Boat higher mode is the most useful when you have basically no um, complete circuit, when it's just an open-ended track, or in this case, it's a kind of circular endless loop here and a dead end on the back side. So you'll note here, pre-spaced vehicles. I'll make these a little, oh, not like that. I will make the vehicles a little brighter so you can see them. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and test this. And you'll see that the first vehicle went down here, and then the other vehicles went here. If we get rid of this, we can see that the other one is uh, cruising here down below. Now, what we did not do yet is adjust our lift hill chain speed. So we're going at four right now. It's not quite what we want. So a little bit faster. I found that 11 miles per hour works well. You can go to 12, you can go wherever speed you want. If you really want to crank it up, then go for it. This seems like a realistic speed. Um, you'll notice too that it's fast enough that the boats go out. Uh, and swing outwards, but it's not too, too fast that they, they look um, a little bit awkward doing it. And you can see here as we slow down, the uh, swing kind of works its way inwards, which I think is a nice touch. 
and sort of eases itself into the brink. So we want that clean operational look for the whole thing. So that's really all there is to it. Now, as far as invisibility goes, we're going to go ahead and take this top one here and uh, change it into uh, unknown ride 38. We can change it to whatever we want, but that's a good option. And then to make your station huts go away, uh, actually what we can do before we do that is mini roller coaster. Make sure you connect your queue first, but then station style, you go no entrance. Get rid of that. And here you go. And now you are all set with your ride. And down below, you can make this invisible if you want. You don't have to. You can paint the ride black. You can do whatever you want, depending on how clean you want the whole thing. And then from there, it's just a matter of theming it. So for me, I used you know, our water here. I gave it a little kind of mill theme and just some fountains all around. Pretty simple overall look. Um, two different ones, two different colors. Uh, they are two independent rides. Uh, if you wanted to make them one ride, you could, but... Uh, it would only have a single queue, so you kind of have a little bit of an awkwardness uh, there. There's nothing to say you couldn't do this as a uh, different shaped ride too, like an oval, but the real ones only ever come in circles like this. So if you want to go all fantasy and do something interesting as far as shapes go, then by all means, have at it. Uh, and then really, it's just kind of a simple theme here for the overall thing, and that's it. And that's it for the tutorial. It's a pretty quick one, pretty easy to get back into the thing. So uh, hopefully that's a nice accessible one. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link to the download for these ride vehicles in the description. If you'd like to take a look at those and uh, see what there is to see. I will also have a link in the description to our new Discord channel. If you haven't joined, feel free to come hang out. Uh, I figure it's a good way to uh, get the community together for suggestions, for feedback, for, you know, whatever. Uh, so it's a nice new thing we're going to try out. So feel free to join up and, uh, and say hi. All right, so that's it for today. Next uh, time around, we're going to build out this island a little bit, and uh, you'll just have to wait and see what is dropping in. So until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching, and enjoy your day. Bye now.